Hello everyone, welcome to another mind map. Uh, this is Chingir. Uh, greetings to you. Uh, today I want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, self-coaching, right? Uh, and the reason being like partially, uh, part of my reasons comes from my practice as a coach. But I just realized also not everyone is able to uh, afford a coach, right? So I was just thinking, uh, how can you be your own coach? And this is already a well-known practice, but not uh, not so common, uh, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, my motivation behind this video. I hope you learn something. Again, uh, despite it's looking very <laughs> organized, it's going to be very much a stream of consciousness. So bear with me. But today I want to talk about coaching and uh, how you can be your own coach. All right, so first of all, you can see all the sections we're going to talk about, like what coaching is, uh, why why self-coaching works as a practice, right? How you can do it in three kind of uh, steps in the process. Uh, I'm going to give you an example for different frameworks that exist uh, for coaches out there. Uh, we're going to talk about like one specific example, but very much like if you understand the framework and the process, like you will be able to apply uh, this this uh, kind of methodology to your to yourself uh, to any kind of situation any kind of problem that you want to solve uh, some exercises that I want to share and uh, I will share some resources in the end so uh, first and foremost like what is coaching right like to to understand coaching itself I think a lot of people have misconceptions out there like of what the coaching is so I want to talk about this very quickly what coaching is not like let's start with that all right what coaching is not coaching coaching is not a therapy right like that's that's the number one thing uh we're not we're not therapists uh we're not healing you because we do not come into the conversation uh, with the presupposition that you're broken right and this is what therapy is doing but not not life coaches not coaches coaching is not consulting right we we do not come into the conversation from the position like hey we know better uh, we do not know better you're the best expert on yourself uh, and uh, yeah, there is nothing that we can consult you on. Uh, uh, we can only be guides in a certain way. So in the same sense, coaching is not mentoring, right? Like we, our job, as I said, is to guide, but our guidance doesn't come from a position of an expert, right? Coaching is not teaching, right? Yes, sometimes some knowledge transfer is required, like we can share some tools and methodologies with you. But uh, in most cases, all knowledge, all the answers that you need are hidden within yourself. And that brings us to uh, what coaching is. Coaching is a transformational conversation, right? Like we help others to solve the problems that they have uh, and uh, through, through the conversation, changing the world one conversation at a time, like as I used to, uh, I used to say. And uh, another definition of coaching would be unlocking the potential to maximize the performance. So when it comes to life coaching, for example, it is pretty much an unlocking the potential of the mind in order to uh, maximize your performance in the world. Uh, like how do you how do you manifest your own reality? Right. Uh, we're going to talk about manifestation. Like don't, uh, we don't we are not going very metaphysical here. It's pretty much very physical. So what kind of types of coaching out there? Uh, types of coaching, uh, these are the major ones, right? Like uh, so there, there are spiritual coaches out there, financial coaches helping you with your uh, increase your financial intelligence and your situation. Uh, career coaches, this is something, well, uh, because of my day job, right? Like I'm, I'm in talent acquisition and this is something I dabble in as well. Uh, relationships coaching right both like with uh, with your partners with your family uh, maybe with friends maybe uh, uh, with relationships at work health and fitness coaches helping you the best uh, to get in the best shape of your life and of course life coaching in general right as I said we do not come into the conversation like with as a position of experts we do not know how to live your life better but we uh, do have tools we do have methodologies and we do have our own journey in life and our own experience uh, that help us to facilitate this the, this change in you. Uh, so that's what coaching is really, right? In order to uh, proceed further, let me follow this really fast, right? I want to talk about like before, uh, before going into self-coaching, I want to talk about a competence cycle model of learning. Uh, sounds fancy, but what it really is, is that we learn uh, like when it comes to every skill, 
uh, right? Uh, not only skill, but also absorbing knowledge uh, from this uh, universe, right? We go through four levels. Unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and unconscious competence, right? Like, uh, pretty much like self-explanatory, but like let's uh, walk through them one, one by one. Unconscious incompetence is when you, you don't know what you don't know, right? And you don't know that you don't know. And uh, an example would be like a child who's never seen a bicycle. He doesn't even understand like, oh, that's, there is a vehicle like that and uh, I, can, I can use it and I can, uh, yeah, enjoy myself. Uh, this is like, I think when it comes to skills, like especially whatever it is, right? Soft skills, hard skills, that's the worst case. This is the worst kind of situation to find yourself in. Uh, you, when you don't understand that you're lacking certain, th certain skill or knowledge. Uh, next coming conscious incompetence, right? When you, you have awareness that you lack a skill, right? So the, a child, a child saw other children riding a bicycle and laughing and, and having fun time, but he at the same time, sorry, he or she at the same time doesn't understand, uh, does understand that he doesn't have, uh, that skill, right? Doesn't know how to ride a bicycle, uh, conscious competence you have learned uh, the skill like the the, ch the child learned how to ride a bike but you still need to think about it in order to do it right like that's a that's a conscious process like if you do not uh, if you stop controlling right you can fall off the bike right and uh, that's um, and that, that's like true with many many skills out there uh, unconscious competence is that you've mastered the skill so well like you've learned something so well that is hardwired into your brain right it, in fact, like even thinking about it can become an impediment. Like if you you do it, you do it, you know it so well, you've mastered it so well, you do it automatically. But if you start thinking about it, how to do it actually again consciously, right? It's uh, it becomes an impediment to the process. So, for example, you see that you see those uh, kids out there who are like riding a bike on one wheel, right, uh, on the busy busy streets or like riding the bike, standing on the bike, right? That's uh, that's like another, like or doing some tricks, right? That's another level of mastery. And they don't, they don't actually process it, right? It's just like their body is already uh, doing it automatically. So why is this important? That's important to understand uh, is that for me, uh, I mean, for all of us, right? In a sense, we, we have some skills and knowledge where we are just stuck at this level. Right, we we don't know that we don't know, right? And it's uh, it take it requires very intentional search and very deliberate uh, kind of truth seeking in order to elevate yourself into at least like the first level understanding that you have a certain problem, right, or a certain direction you want to take in development, right? And then, um, yeah, uh, be be very intentional about it and uh, bring it to the level of mastery eventually. So enough of that. Uh, so as I said, right, having a coach is great. And <laughs> that's, that's, I think like what, uh, we really need in this world more. We don't need more knowledge. We don't need more information or tools. What we need, we need more coaches, right? And, um, I if you can be your, your own coach, like, of course, uh, probably some depth of insight will be locked for you, but there's a lot of work that you can do for yourself and you can really progress in life. So why self-coaching would work, right? Uh, first of all, many, many people, they do not spend time really understanding and calibrating their mind, right? Like our mind map, right? Uh, the thing that we're doing right now, right? This mind map is pretty much uh, like an organized knowledge uh, inside my mind, right? And uh, this is what I'm sharing with you. Many people didn't, like I do, I do it partially for the purpose of, you know, organizing something in my own mind right but i also uh ho hope that's gonna benefit you uh and that what's the problem with that right if we do not have like our our mind map like uh we don't understand like how we navigate in this world we don't know where we are we don't know our point a if we don't know where we start our beginning starting point zero point we will never be able to get to the point b right and uh that's just that's just physics again like uh, the principles of navigation um Again, uh, the presupposition that we use here, and that's uh, that's a uh, presupposition of NLP. We're going to talk about it more, but like all answers are within you, and you just need to know how to ask, how to tap into this, and that's the role of a coach, right? Uh, another thing that to keep in mind is um, the change will happen when the change, 
when, sorry, when the pain of change becomes less than the pain of remaining the same, right? That's, that's important to understand. And this is where many coaches like fail in the beginning, right? We, we start working with people and people are saying like, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to tra- change my life. I'm ready to transform. But their behavior, their emotional state, like their thought patterns, like they're not there yet. They're not at the point when uh, the pain of change is less than the pain of remaining the same, right? You have to you have to associate excruciating pain of your current state, and uh, you have to associate pleasure with where you want to be, with with the vision and the actualized potential in order for change to start happening, right? And uh, that's important to understand. And lastly, uh, I think this is also uh, like this is a principle that uh, you can embed in your life. Uh, responsibility breeds empowerment. Right, like uh, the more uh, like a pr- responsibility is not something you avoid. The more uh, responsibility you uh, take into your life, the more meaningful your life will become, and more empowered you will become. The more you will feel more in control. Uh, I think uh, Jordan Peterson uh, talks a lot about it. Right, uh, what's what's the uh, purpose of a man? Right, uh, the purpose of a man is to. Uh, shoulder as much responsibility as you possibly can physically can carry and and then carry it right Uh, because with responsibility um, it's a burden but it it comes the meaning right Uh, people for example if you're a man you take responsibility first for yourself for like how you self-manage and then uh, you find a partner you marry uh, you have a woman you have a wife right you your responsibility increases the zone the the zone of your responsibility you take care of another life right now and then baby comes in and then another baby you take care of children now now you are responsible for the uh, for the units of family right Uh, and then i don't know you're religious you go to church maybe uh, or any other community that you have your responsibility you become a leader there and your responsibility uh, uh, starts to starts to envelop uh, your your community right maybe it's community at work you're a leader at work or a manager right you're responsible for the performance of a team right and then further and then further you're a mayor you're responsible for the city you're a president you're responsible for the country right and then but the conscious consciousness uh sorry of uh, like a planetary consciousness if you if you embody it you start responsible for uh for the whole world right like not everything matters uh but again, of course, you cannot you cannot invest your energy and attention in everything, right? But you treat everything as this the whole world is you, right? And the way you operate in this world is um, uh, like kind of projecting the level of responsibility that you take. Sorry, I'm kind of getting off track here, but you get the idea. Uh, the m- more the more responsibility you take, the more empowered you feel, the more meaning you have in your life. Uh, so here's the process, right? Like what, what you can do in order to self-coach yourself. Three steps. You need to self-assess, understand that what's the starting point, point A, uh, right? Creating space. We're going to talk about it. Like un- that's, again, organization of your own thoughts. And third thing is a calibrating. So you can see <laughs> there are a lot of nods there. We're going to talk about it. So self-assessment, right? Uh, first of all, Here's a very common exercise, and uh, it's a coaching tool, and people are use it called Wheel of Life. Uh, if you if you just type Wheel of Life, my name, and Medium, you'll find an article like kind of explaining this. But essentially, that's how it looks like, right? You you draw a circle on a piece of paper, right? And you draw uh, what is it? Six lines, right? In order to uh, to to break. Um, the whole circle into eight sectors. Every sector is responsible for a certain aspect of your life, right? And you can see them. Then them named. They are like this in a particular order, uh, because uh, health is primary. If you don't have health, right, like uh, all your relationships gonna suck. If you if you uh, if relationships, uh, it's kind of related to a Maslow's pyramid, right? Uh, if you if you have problems with relationships, problems with your environment. Right, you're gonna have trouble with your career. No career, no money. No money. You cannot invest in your personal growth. You cannot invest money into the brightness of your life, like travel and different stuff that uh, um, energizes you emotionally. And obviously, if you don't cover all these aspects, like you do not have uh, neither time nor energy to invest into your uh, spiritual development. 
right? So you do that, you draw a circle and you assess every, every, every aspect of your life, sector by sector, associate uh, to each sector certain points, like from zero, like how uh, kind of you're gauging your level of satisfaction and also uh, like scale overall from zero to 10, right? How satisfied are you? And uh, you assess like if you say like health, my health is seven out of 10, like how, why, why did I remove three points, right? And seven is kind of a dangerous uh, number for many, many, uh, for all of all of these sectors, right? Why? Because it's like, meh, it's not good, but not bad, right? And it's in between. So uh, kind of look inside and tell yourself honestly where you're leaning towards. Is it like more six or more eight? And why are you removing the points for yourself? How can you increase it? So two things to remember here is uh, number one, uh, the scale of the of the wheel and imagine like you well, like again all, all this is like a vehicle uh, in which you progress in life right the size of your wheels bigger bigger wheels bigger rides right and uniformity if your if your circle is not uniform you're gonna feel bumps on the on the road so your first goal your first job is to make your wheel uniform right so if you if you feel like you score very little on, on certain aspects how you can maximize it right what's the work that has to be done and then uh, as you as you as you progress and you make it your wheel more uniform how can you scale it right so how can you make your wheels bigger uh, i think everything is pretty self-explanatory just do this exercise um, personality tests right um, i don't know i'm not gonna go in, in depth here but uh, again do not go with one, just slowly, slowly start chipping away and, and kind of uh, go through them one by one. Disc is the easiest one. MBTI is going to take you 10 minutes. Enneagram, it will require some research and it actually will take some time, but it's very comprehensive. Strength Finder, uh, different themes, right? Like wh what are what are you good at? And uh, uh, for, for career, for example, it's very important because you can understand uh, like how you can leverage your strengths and then at the same time and, and then capitalize on them right and then mitigate uh, your weaknesses personality test it's huge understanding your own psychology how you operate your thought patterns your preferences uh you know your uh yeah just uh your your preferences in the sense that under your psychology defines how uh, you will prefer to to make decisions right that's important uh, current state, right? Uh, three, uh, three tips here. That's some three things that you can do. Journaling is, <laughs> I don't know, for me, it's an absolute must, right? If you do not uh, remove everything from your mind, right? And that's, uh, that's just like, I always give this example of, uh, of a washing machine, right? Uh, everything is just like a dir dir dirty laundry inside, revolving inside, right? You need to give your thoughts a physical form. Only then you can, you can arrange them and you can uh, organize them. You're in control. Once, once it's only in your head and it's just like this uh, turmoil, this uh, you know, tornado of thoughts in, in your mind, you do not control them. They control you. So journaling is great. Uh, meditation and observation meditation essentially being observing your thoughts but also observing just your actions and how do you how do you operate like uh, reflecting on the situations that happen like some someone tells you something at work and how did you react to that uh, collecting feedback right like it's very hard to get, gain perspective sometimes like so you can talk to people who know you really really well right and then here's a like a simple exercise approach them and say like hey describe me in 10 adjectives right talk to i don't know your parents your best friend your partner uh, or tell me what are what do you think are my strengths what do you think uh, i can improve on right collecting collecting feedback and like absorbing truly it you know, greeting it with open mind right that that will complete your picture that's already a lot like these are three simple uh things three simple activities that you can do they will give you a, they will tell you a lot about your current situation right so this is this this is the self assessment part um so there's going to be a huge chunk talking about nlp but uh what i mean by creating space as i said if you have all the thoughts not n not in organized way uh if they're just uh, you know flying around and and uh stinging you like a big swarm of wasps in your mind so like they are controlling you how do you create space in your mind you know this creative space when you can start thinking creatively 
So first of all, step into this um, kind of space of, uh, sorry, into this step of creating space with a certain mindset. And this is where we use again NLP presuppositions, right? NLP stands for uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming, right? And uh, we will we will talk about this about more in depth. But like your, how do you program your mind, right? So these NLP presuppositions they actually come very very handy in in coaching practice and just in life, right? Uh, understand that map is not the territory. We talked about it. Like every person is navigating in the world using their own maps, right? We uh, maps are maps consist of a certain um, uh, exp- like our life experiences, our previous knowledge, what we learned about this world, what other people taught us about this world, and uh, obviously uh, this is our system of beliefs, what we think is true for us, right? Uh, every person there ha- they have their own individual map. But map is not the territory. If you take my map, it's not going to be equal to yours. Yours is not going to be equal to your friends, right? Uh, that's important to remember. Your map is not the territory. Your your perception of reality is not the reality itself, right? It's just how you you, you think about it. And that why is it important to understand? It gives you this stance that you you actually accept that your map can be flawed. And there can be some deficiencies, there can be some redundancies, there can be something very dysfunctional beliefs that you have to work on. Second, uh, if you use long enough, map becomes the territory. That's also important to understand, right? If, you're, uh, if you, you've been told or you used to believe long enough in a certain, a certain belief, right? A certain, uh, you have a certain conviction, right? It, it becomes your normal, right? It is your normal and you think that that's, that's how the world operates. But obviously, like, it's just, it's just a secret, right? Like, you understand that cannot be true, um, right? That's, again, allows you to, to remember that not everything you know is true, right? And then, like, kind of assess your, your beliefs and your, um, uh, your ideas about the, this world and about yourself as well more uh, objectively and critically number three everyone has all the tools they need to achieve the desired results that's again that's nlp presupposition that's what we use when we step into the coaching conversation but that's what you also can use right like always remember that all the tools all the knowledge all the insights there uh, maybe are, are not accessible to you right now but they are locked in inside like how do you unlock this right it is possible it's possible to do it through self-work uh, it's definitely possible if you work with a coach Another presupposition, the past is not equal the future, right? And uh, whatever whatever the past traumas you had, whatever the past failures, you you, th- you call them failures, right? Uh, but we're going to jump into this, but uh, failure doesn't exist, only feedback, right? But whatever happened in the past does not define who you are in the future. Right? You can live all your life, like the man can live all his life and uh, have a lot of screw-ups. But one day, one morning, he just realizes like, okay, enough, like I'm going to do something about it. And uh, I've had enough, right? I'm going to start like little things. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start waking up early. I'm going to shave myself. I'm going to go find myself a job. Maybe uh, not a super decent one in the beginning, but like I will work hard. I will progress, right? Your past is not the future. And this is something we use in coaching as well, right? When we when we step into the conversation, this is why it's not a therapy. We, we are not interested in the past, right? We're interested in the current state, in the future, where, where we are right now, where we want to go, and how do we close the gap, right? As, uh, as I mentioned, failure doesn't exist, right? That's that's how we should treat failure, right? If you, if you fail at everything, like, you just get a feedback from the universe or from, from reality, right? A child begins to walk, and uh, first I don't know hundreds, uh, several hundreds, several thousand times maybe, like uh, a child will fall, right, before starting working, walking. But the child doesn't say like, oh, you know what, this walking thing, that's th- that's not my thing. Like I'm, I'm just gonna crawl, crawl around. No, uh, you persist, and then you persist, and then you persist, and then it becomes your thing, whatever it is, whatever the skill you you want to master, or whatever the uh, uh, solution problem uh, sorry it's the solution or belief you want to implement so this is important to understand uh, organize your mind again we talked about it journaling 
uh, there one si one simple example of like how to create space again right one example of journaling would be monkey mind journal that's the easiest one you just uh, whatever you are like you you're a more analog person you like journaling with a pen and paper or uh, which helps if you're if you're like uh, an old school like if you like typing but you just sit down and again stream of consciousness you write or you type until you're empty like whatever it doesn't have to be organized it doesn't the idea here is to dump everything to puke all your thoughts on the paper right until you like sit down and say okay there is nothing more I, like i'm tapping into it i'm tapping into my mind there is nothing to say that's the that's the state of emptiness that you want to achieve once you like process everything that bothers you all these wa wasps or, of uh, thoughts that are stinging you they should be uh, manifested physically uh, notion obsidian any kind of uh, like uh, information management system and there are plenty of tutorials out there uh, you need to grow a second brain right all these things instead of ha having all these thoughts uh, that are uh, keeping you keeping you awake in the night right you organize them right and, and then you start understanding like all the all the work related stuff one separate uh, folder whatever organization right uh, this is this is what i'm using right like here is uh, mind mapping because this is very very close uh, to how the actual mind operates right we think in associative circles and within these circles there are interrelations right so uh, dump everything organize it mind map it if you like once once you've done it you will you will organize your mind and trust me uh like if you step with this mindset and if you do the organization work you will create creative space in your mind create creative space that sounds odd and then come you come into third step number three which is important like how do you calibrate now like how do you calibrate your mind now we're going to talk about the, the 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 meat of this conversation is nlp how do you actually reprogram your mind and we're going to talk a little bit more about journaling journaling is pretty much like you are your own self-coach and this is <laughs> this is the main tool but let's talk about nlp all right um so nlp primarily like what is what is nlp again it's a neuro linguistic programming well, how to understand what is neuro and what is linguistic linguist linguistic is language neuro is is your brain essentially right your body is a vessel right you you are you you're not your body you live inside your body right uh, if you simplest example you you cut off your hands like is it still you yes it's still you right same same happens with the leg and yeah the same happens even with um, you know with people who got shot in the head and lost a part of their brain it's still like still their identity remains the same right um brain is the hardware that's your pc that's your computer right uh in your mind is a software right so what what does it mean here like operating system uh that uh, contains uh culture your, your like your cultural background like all the programs that are written there uh, the language right like <laughs> the language is uh like kind of the core of your operating system and you absorb the culture and traditions uh, and other stuff with that and like even like deeper patterns um meta programs right like we're going to talk about this but like these deep underlying beliefs right uh that's 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 your operating system and different applications right applications um our beliefs and ideas and thought patterns right you can install them you can uninstall them right and uh, you can utilize them so uh, that's kind of that's kind of the thought here uh, body is a biochemical machine yeah obviously the, uh, you're changing the biochemistry of your body interestingly your, th your thoughts are changing your your emotions are changing your behavior is changing right uh, you you like i don't know uh, hormone therapy right <laughs> whatever you are like man or woman if you if you're using testosterone you will see like how how body is reacting but um Amy Cuddy has a TED talk, right? Like the power, power poses, right? Uh, you strike a power pose. The biochemistry of your body is changing. Uh, the co your cortisol is dropping. The the hormone of stress, right? And you you feel more empowered. That's that's very interesting how it works. Not gonna go into depth here. Um, t take a look at the TED talk. Like super famous, but you probably already heard of it. So. Uh, we can we can go here what what is like on some of the nlp tools that you can utilize with yourself 
image training, modeling, meta models, meta programs, and techniques. Image training is very, very easy, right? It's a visualization exercises, right? And that's why we talk, right? Like well, we, we need to think about the future, like the vision that excites us. Where are we going? What do we want to do with our life, right? And uh, does it set us on fire, right? And if it does, like that's, that's the desire, that's the energy that can be harnessed and uh, channeled into, into actual change, right? Transformation. Modeling, that's very important. Important to understand here, what you consistently think about multiplies, right? What does that mean? Where, another, where another, another way to phrase it, like, and I use it a lot, like where attention goes, energy flows, right? That's, that's very important. The, the only skill that you need to master in this life is like how to channel your attention into things that you want, right? Uh, you always have a choice what to do with your time, right? We all have 24 hours in a week, uh, sorry, in a, in a day, right? And uh, uh, what, do, what do we do with our, atten with our attention, with, our, with this resource? So, yes, uh, people talk a lot about law of attraction. How do I manifest my thoughts? I don't want to go esoteric or, me or metaphysical here, right? Like, um, law, or law of attraction state, right? You will attract in your life whatever you focus on, right? And... Uh, that's very important to understand here because people don't get it not not many people get it like but when when you, you can ask them a question like what comes first and many will be puzzled right what comes first emotion or thought thought or emotions right well the answer is thought comes first right and it's very easy to prove if i if i tell you like close your eyes think about the happiest day in your life right after some time you, you, you like if you start picturing it in details your emotional state will start to shift right and I will say, like, okay, how do you feel now? And, uh, like, f how does this emotion physically manifest itself in your, in your body, right? You say, oh, I feel lightness. I feel like uh, yeah, something is, uh, some spasms are uh, disappearing in my neck, right? Like, I feel, I feel light and uh, transparent and um, energized even, right? And then with this emotional state, you can go and you can, you can do something with it, right? Like, you can, uh, if you feel good, you can do something good for yourself. Right, but I say, hey, imagine the worst day of your life. Like, remember, the, like, transport yourself there in your mind, right? And then, how do you feel? And then, uh, the thought will evoke an emotional state. Uh, you will say, oh, like, I feel heavy. Uh, maybe there will be a color or something red. I feel a choking sensation in my neck, uh, in my throat. Right, and uh, yeah, with this, uh, do you feel energy? No, you feel d you feel drained, right? And uh, with this emotional state, so like if you feel like that, it will affect your behavior, right? And that will bring your results, your habits, and all that stuff. So this is important to understand, right? What like this is how, uh, this is how law law of attraction manifests. This is why if you think about something long enough and hard enough, right, you will feel certain way in most of the time. That will affect your behavior. That will drive results, but not like. It's, it's not gonna work and this is why i put like this x emoji right law of attraction doesn't work in a way that you're gonna think and uh, about something and something will ma appear in your life you can think like for a million years but if you only think nothing's gonna happen this is why we talk about law of action not law of attraction right law of action states we must take action in our lives to see the change happen right or uh, written shortly in order to remember it clearly to be is equal to do right your being is equal to doing something on a constant basis uh, why is this important right uh, th this is important for modeling because um, you can model certain behavior who is already who is already doing certain things and being a certain thing right mentor find yourself a mentor that's the easiest way to to uh, i mean it's not so easy, it, uh, but if you find it, you're going to facilitate your learning very, very much. Who, who lives the lifestyle you want to have, right? And you can have many mentors. You can, you can talk to many people. You can uh, approach them and just... Uh, that's, that's an interesting exercise. Just approach and ask and see, see what's going to happen, how they're going to respond. Mastermind group, like, again, try to find one. Try to find a group of people who, who will share your beliefs and who, will, who are, like, on the path of self-improvement. And if not, maybe you will be the one. You, are, you, are, you can be the one who organized the mastermind group. Okay. <clears throat> Meta models, right? 
uh, that's very important also i think <laughs> very important to understand to operate in this world effectively we all have a set of mental filters this when we absorb information the information that goes into our mind like our mind has this mental filters four of them primarily distortion deletion generalization and personalization number one is distortion simply we distort the events in our mind whatever it's called like a self-interpretation whatever the event happens 10 people will see like what happened on the street and all tell all 10 will tell you a different story because their minds they distort um what they've seen like and and give like interpret the events in a certain way important to understand you have this filter everyone has that creates bias deletion we delete certain elements of the of the reality right like you've um, for example with all the um, uh, all the i don't know some kind of bad memories that you have right you delete certain parts and that's very interesting like as you recall the same memory it's also changing every time you recall a memory it is changing right and it is uh, it is presented to you in a different light and uh, this is why we kind of uh, something that happened something that bad that happened to us with time we gain perspective and we forget simply or we delete uh, certain things that um, uh, cause us discomfort generalization right uh, in order to make sense of this world we need to categorize things right but that's uh, that's a tool that mind is using to make sense of it of the of the world but at the same time uh, used wrongly or not you know, like if you don't if you're not aware of it if you're not using it effectively right uh, you're putting things into buckets right and like what's the um i would say the the worst case scenario right like let's say example is racism right you you have a certain experience with a certain person and then you uh, and uh, i don't know what their their race is there like uh, asian or caucasian or uh uh, like black, yellow, brown, whatever, right? You say, you start saying, hey, those black people or those white people or those brown people, yeah, there is no such thing as people. Every person is different, right? But uh, every person is different and <laughs> we are all the same, right? This generalization can go very, very, can go, it can go wrong way, right? It can be very dangerous. Um, but again, that's just the way the mind operates personalization another very dangerous mental filter we take things personally right and uh, that's again interpretation of your mind and we're going to talk um, uh, probably in some uh, in some other video about locus of control but like personalization is uh, don't take things personally some things just they just happen they do not happen to you they do not happen to make you feel miserable right uh, they just happen right and, and this again how do you uh, interpret it be aware of these mental filters and that will help you to to keep keep your mind in check in super critical to to remember this we do not react to reality only to our perception of reality right um, we do not react to reality only to our perception of reality we do not we do not know what reality looks like right like we th we th we, th we think like the grass is green is it well, the, the green is the word that we created to describe what our perception of a color which is what we see only a very narrow range of a whole specter of waves right uh, which is visible light right and and then we as we call it colors right uh, we do not react to reality only to our perception of reality uh, we don't know what what color the grass is is the cut is the grass real sorry i'm going matrix mode here uh so to <laughs> coming back to change to inspire change change your perception right like to change your perception change the way you see things and you will you will start thinking about them differently you will start acting differently right and this is the technique that is called reframing right? how do you flip the narrative of this certain of the certain situation so this is meta models meta programs as I, as i said we're talking about like a very um uh, very deep underlying beliefs right so first of all these meta programs they run in the background uh, we focus on them not necessarily being aware of it they mo uh, this is something that motivate us right like this is how like uh, uh you, you would think again about it it's uh, meta programs they run on like on the it's like a back back end of your mind right uh we they're not in focus there we're not we're not uh, necessarily it's not a conscious process right 
but it it is what motivates us it is how it defines how we interact with people it very much defines how we interact with ourselves right and depending on this interaction the relationship that we have with ourselves uh, comes self-management so here are some examples right uh, for example toward our way right uh, are we like mm, more uh, focusing on gaining pleasure or avoiding pain that's important right uh, in careers for example right are you going away from a company or you're going towards your next career stretch uh, external or internal frame of reference super important right uh, some uh, some people are more like and again it's it's probably situational but it's also uh, it's a deep underlying program right are you rating yourself uh, are, you, are you rating your own performance having your own uh, frame of reference like understanding what success means to you and um uh, what's what's your own definition of being successful right or you're like seek from se seeking feedback from others and what other people think sorting by self sorting by others similar thing right like but um uh whenever whenever there is a, an exchange right uh, a transaction uh, people you think what's in it for you what's in it for others how you how you can serve others right uh deep underlying program matcher or mismatcher right uh you when you see when you meet new people do you see how you're like what's the sameness or you start spotting differences right this is again it can happen very unconsciously possibility versus necessity right uh, are you accepting what's available or you seek options experiences choices and paths this is super important like are you accepting whatever happens to you right now is it normal or you look constantly, very intentionally, uh, invest your energy into seeking new options, seeking new experiences, seeking new choices, and new things like what can you do with yourself and with your life, right? Working style, uh, it's a meta program. Are you independent, are you cooperative, or, or proximity? Independent, obviously, like you like to be alone and you like to run the show. Uh, cooperative, you like working in teams, you share responsibility for a task, or maybe you're something in between the proximity style right these are some example of meta programs right but i would call like meta programs everything that's been very much uh, i don't know you, like it's a belief that learned so deep you're not even aware of it like they say money is evil right and at the same time we all want to be rich but some some people and like myself personally right like i i had this and i'm still probably struggling with it right I'm kind of erasing like money is evil it's it doesn't work it's a conflicting belief if money is evil but i won't have money right it doesn't work uh doesn't work together uh so techniques nlp techniques uh we talked about reframing uh another one is anchoring and affirmations what what you can use our job is to nlp program our mind through the language Reframing is number one, right? Uh, what is reframing? You're just f you're just flipping the situation, right? Like seeing the way, like how can I how can I flip the situation in order to see the positive side of it, and uh, uh, positive and effective, uh, like kind of an, 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 a scenario that would make me productive, right? That would that would motivate me towards being productive. So, for example, problem or challenge. You can call things problems or you can call things challenges. Like how do you start even feeling about it? Problem? Oh, I have a problem. This is a challenge. See how it feels? It feels different. Uh, same thing. I have to. I choose to. That's a simple reframing technique, right? I, ha I have to do my work. Oh, I'm so tired. No, I choose to, right? I choose to do the work and I choose to do it very, very well <laughs> so that people start to appreciate me. Uh, they make me feel to no one can make me feel right they they make me feel you you relinquish your control people are controlling you no one can make you me feel that's a belief that's a different uh different belief that you can you can you can reframe the whole scenario of who is creating your own emotional state and you will see that those are your thoughts your thoughts your emotions your behavior you're in control Right. No one can make you feel anything if you refuse. No one can make you feel miserable if you refuse. No one can make no one can make you feel angry if you refuse to engage. Right. So that brings us to like being reactive or being creative. Are you reacting to the reality, or you like step taking a pause and you and you think, okay, now I'm gonna create my response. 
right? Two, two letters, uh, but huge difference. Logotherapy uh, by Viktor Frankl, right? If you, if you read the book, uh, yeah, obviously super famous, read the book. Uh, but this is a huge example of reframing, right? The person is in a concentration camp and she thinks like, okay, well, people are dying around, right? And his family was murdered, right? And he's there and he's reframing the whole situation and thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this experience? I'm going to use it. I'm going to use myself and other people that I see around myself as a subject of my psychological experiment. And once I'm there, once I'm out, I'm going to consolidate it into knowledge, into this uh, into this body of knowledge, into the movement that, uh, sorry, the the... Uh, how should I put it, uh, like a framework, right? Like that's uh, that was called logotherapy, and uh, I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna lecture people. I'm gonna tell people how uh, uh, how to create more meaning in their life when when nothing makes sense, when everything is meaningless. Um, all right, that's just an example. Reframing, great technique. Anchoring, another NLP technique that you can use. Anchoring the reframed state, right? Uh, you feel bad, you start thinking good thoughts, you start think, thinking, well, how can you anchor it? Uh, on your, you, you can anchor it on your body or you can anchor it on a certain object, right? Like, a, uh, I don't know, like a widget, for example, right? Like I have uh, on my desk right now a meditation bell, right? Like I know, uh, like sometimes uh, I just sit down and I, I just uh, make a ring and uh, this, this very sound, the vibration, right it's cleansing the mind like I'm, i just sit down and i focus for like several seconds on the sound and on the breathing that's an anchor example of an anchor right you can um tapping technique right you uh you as you uh, like these affirmations that are very very um uh very famous right like you you program yourself you tell yourself uh what is uh what is what, what's the new truth what's the new belief for yourself right i'm 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 gonna be confident. I'm, I love people. I love I love public speaking. I love connecting with people, and you anchor it into your body by tapping. You take a hand, take your right hand, and you start. You probably can hear that tapping, tapping your heart, and you say, "I'm confident. I love people." This is this is an anchoring technique, a work that works together in combination with affirmations. More intense version of affirmation coined by Tony Robbins. It's called incantation, right? Uh, you can look look it up. Very intense. You're just like yelling and completely embody like the energy. And uh, but yeah, probably very good for brainwashing yourself. And that's what we do, washing our brain. So uh, this is the huge chunk NLP. Should have been probably a separate video. Uh, Reprogramming. How can you reprogram your mind? Understand that in order for a change to happen, you need to create an identity shift. The identity shift must happen. And overall, I would just recommend everything that happens in the future, treat it as identity sculpting, right? You're a sculptor and you're like, you're constantly in this rock state and you, how can you, uh, how can you create that identity that you want to become. What is that person? Like ask yourself these questions and you can you can write them down on paper and then again journal, right? You write them on, write this question and you describe it in very in, in 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 detail. What is this person I want to become? How does this person think? How does this person feel? How does this person behave? Right? Like what is act? What is the reality they live in? Like what do they do on a daily basis? What time do they wake up? What time do they go to sleep? What is their morning routine, evening routine? What do they eat? How do they look when they look them, themselves into the mirror? Um, and sculpt yourself. Uh, information consumption. Again, that's what I said. NLP is pre pretty much a brainwashing, right? What kind of information you consume? You need to consume it very deliberately. And uh, body has a higher intelligence in terms of that. You can go take shower and the, and the dirt from your body uh, will be washed away, right? You cannot wash your brain like whatever you consume goes inside your mind how do you feed your mind like this this beliefs that you want to nurture in yourself how do these seeds seeds of belief that you put in how do you nurture them how do you water them all right because everything all this information consumption all this everything you feed right it will cascade to the to subconscious mind right like if you, if you consume disturbing news all the time like oh there is a war or there's a there, there's a revolution the people are dying there is hunger right 
it cascades to your subconscious mind, creates the feeling of anxiety. Feed your mind with uh, benign information. Leverage environment design, right? Uh, you can, uh, what does that mean? Eliminate distractions. Nothing like, like I don't know, I think Will Smith said that. I will eliminate everything that uh, does not propel me towards my goals, right? Um, what is not helping? Like what, what is, and primarily information consumption. What information does not help you to move forward, right? What inf what uh, uh, what does not promote desired behavior? Like, what are the what are the objects around you? And that's another like the idea behind the minimalism, right? Like, what is a distraction? And what what does not move you forward? Uh, use use this. Treat everything as identity sculpting. Consume the right information. And design your environment, and you will it will help you to reprogram yourself. Journaling is huge, right? And I just want to sh touch shortly about like the things that you can uh, um, uh, you can utilize here. So stoic journal, right? Choose one stoic meditation, reflect on it. How do I how do I think like a stoic? Like stoicism, there's going to be a different video. I don't want to talk about it, but that's like if you cover this philosophy, that's probably like 80, 90 percent of what you need to be a productive human being, right? Gratitude journal. Nurture your grateful mind, right? Like write three things every day you're grateful for. Reflection journal. Spend the day. What are the highlights? What are the lowlights uh, of the day? And what's your focus for the next day? Same thing for the week. Same thing for the months. Same thing for the year, right? Uh, you can write the whole kind of meditation for that. Reframing journal. Uh, a little bit more complex, but nothing's really complicated. Monkey mind. You go write all your problems down. You choose one problem. You see how you can reframe it like definitely you, how do you do that you brainstorm options like how can you can how you can uh, uh like with this particular one problem what what can i do here what are all my options and then what else and then what else until you say there's nothing else there's nothing else i can do right and then um design a system around viable options see like okay out of all these options that i brainstormed what are the viable options right and how can i create a system in order to solve this problem and then just commit commit to this solution run a pilot project do it for a week for a month and see how it works right okay this is a little bit abstract which we will talk a little bit about frameworks of frameworks of coaching and frameworks of self like everything that's used in coaching can be used in self-coaching right so we'll talk about frameworks and we'll give an example so uh framework that is called grow very very simple Goal, reality, options, will, right? G-R-O-W. So what's the goal? What do you want to achieve? What is your current reality? What's happening right now? What else? All the options, as I said, brainstorm them. And will, what will you do? What's the plan? How will you commit to it? That's very simple coaching framework. We can build this conversation with, with other people. We can build this conversation with ourselves. Fuel, another coaching framework coaches will come into conversation they f they will frame the conversation what are we talking about today what's the problem we're trying to solve understand the current state where are you at what's going on uh, explore the desired state what's the vision where are we going and lay out the success plan fuel right oscar uh, what's the outcome objective what are we trying to achieve right um what is the what's the scale like what's on the on the scale from zero to ten what's your progress right now right uh, know how, right? Like, okay, what 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 are we gonna do? What what are different tools and methodologies, right? Uh, affirm, yes, I'm gonna do it, and then take action, right? And then it's a cycle process. You review your progress, review your success, Oscar. All right, coaching habit. That's probably the one that you need the most, and you can use the most. Um, that's a book, right? And I will I put it here in the resources, right? Uh, read this book, read the summary, like listen to audiobooks, whatever. Uh, there there is a set of questions right and it create the book was written for coaches primarily like understand uh, understanding this as a framework but you can use it for your for self coaching as well right sit down and journal what is on your mind and then what else right and that, that's another question like removing everything what what is out there right and then focus com focus question like what's the real challenge here like you it's like we can say, what's on your mind? And we can go, oh, and this and that and that. Well, what is the real challenge? You need to focus yourself. And why do you perceive it as a challenge for yourself? Understanding what is the success looks like for you. And then thinking about how do you get there, right? Once you understand how you get there, what are you committing to, right? 
and that again in famous atomic habits right design systems how what's the system what's the vehicle that will take you there super important question if you're saying yes to this what are you saying no to right if you're saying yes yes i'm gonna do this i'm gonna wake up early i'm gonna do i'm gonna commit what are you saying no to because you need to create that time these are questions are for, for coaches but you need to be aware of them if you have a conversation with the coach they will ask you okay i'm a coach you're a coachy like how can i help you how can uh for you, you can substitute it again with the question, how can I leverage my environment? How can I utilize people and uh, things that are no objects uh, around me right? uh, in order to achieve my goals? The, the coach will ask you what was most useful for you, right? What you can ask yourself, how did this exercise help me? Like what, what, uh, what, what have I learned going through all of this, through this brainstorm? So uh, this is coaching habits, right? Example. So, for example, let's use a simple grow model, right? The goal. Uh, uh, the person wants to improve relationship with the parents. Like, whatever, something doesn't something doesn't work there. Like, understand, like, why do you need this change? Why, why, why is it a challenge? Why are you so unsatisfied? Like, again, you wouldn't go too much into the past. Like, oh, and, and I understand, like, uh, relationship with parents, it comes from the past, right? But focus like one what's the current situation what's go what's the dynamics that is happening right now like and what can i uh what is going on right now what is going on what's this what does this person do and what do i do right like how how are we uh interact with each other right and that's 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 the reality what's the current relationship right um be cold-headed right like no emotion but he but they like don't blame anyone right stay stay cold-headed like kind of step out of the situation and look at the situation uh, kind of as a third person, right? Again, we are not interested in the past, right? You must do the work. You must do the journaling. Like if you don't write it, like it's just thinking. And if it's thinking, it's just chaotic and controls you, right? What is the context? What again? Yes, you must do the you must do the work. You must process the past. Like what happened in the past? Explore your trauma if there is a trauma, right? Explore it on the paper. See see what is there, right? Like why why the relationship is like this right now in the in the in, in today in the current uh, kind of point of time right how does it grow from the past but then again current progress uh, what is going on right now like are we actually trying to do to make it better options what can i do here and again super important clarity stoic exercise what's in my circle of control what actually i can do here what's in my control what is not in my control? Like what is on the other person or on, on any any other factor, external factors? Do what do what do I know is the right thing to do? <laughs> if you if you are honest with yourself, you will tell yourself, yes, I know what's the right thing to do, right? A, spe a good indication is what am I procrastinating on? If you feel like, oh, that's just that's uncomfortable, I don't want to go there. Oh, that's that feels uncomfortable. That's probably the indication that's the right thing to do, right? I'm just I know what's the right thing to do just procrastinating on it right uh, focusing what are the three how to we can, can create immediate progress what are the three easiest steps that i can take today in order to improve this relationship what are the like three small things right if i like if i know that like i, I need to i need to create a dinner and we need to sit down and talk this through but i'm i'm, I'm evading it right that's uh, that's probably the right thing to do. What are the three easiest steps to do? Little gifts, little attention, little kindness. Or maybe again, not something you're adding, something you're removing. Not saying something, not giving a comment, not responding, not engaging, right? Uh, writing a letter, one small step. Because the, <laughs> the benefit of a letter is no one is interrupting you. Uh, brainstorm the scenario or role play with yourself like how how can this okay you have this conversation how can it actually play out right like what can go wrong what can go right and focus on what can go right because again thoughts emotions action right uh, the question that we use if i from from the coaching habit if i say yes to this what do i say no to right if you say yes to all of this yes i will be doing all the things to improve the relationship what the things that I will not do in order to not to deteriorate this relationship further, not to not to cre create a distance further. What are the blockers? What's what's stopping me from right now from uh, from uh, improving this situation? 
and then make a plan. Uh, like, what will I actually do? What am I committing to? Again, three small steps. How can I create the feeling of immediate progress, immediate action, right? What's the deadline? If you say like, okay, I'm going to have a um, dinner with my with my parents, with my father, uh, whatever. Um, what's the deadline? When I'm going to do When I'm going to have this conversation, right? I need to have this conversation by that time. If it's a consistent effort, what's the system? What I'm going to be doing consistently on a daily basis? Uh, right, small acts of kindness or calls or calls or uh, whatever. Uh, well, maybe that's the therapy that therapy or coaching that you need to take. What's the system here? Accountability. How do you keep yourself accountable? Right. Again, involve other people. Involve uh, people who will support you on this journey. Post reflection. Conversation happens. Sit down again. Journal. What happened? process it understand it so what did i did i actually do did we did we progress we didn't get emotional did we learn something from this and what's the lesson here so that's kind of a simple uh simple example uh sorry this video is getting too long but uh we're going to be wrapping up here with uh with the exercises part right again feeling of discomfort is a feeling of growth right if you feel like you don't want to go there probably you should go there probably that's probably you're on the right way right uh out of the body exercise right uh this is something that i uh, i do with with some of my clients but here uh, really here the idea is to objectivize yourself study yourself as an object of your own psychological experiment right sit down close your eyes breathe and like Im envision your problem like your problem is in front of you right spend some time on it visualize it and then, very very weird thing, step out of your body. Like, step out of your body and see yourself still sitting in the chair, still looking at the problem, see all the details. And you will gain that perspective. That's the simple out-of-body exercise. Um, I will probably, like, r uh, record a guiding, uh, guiding kind of exercise, but you can do it right now yourself. Scrutinize your beliefs. As I said, we do not like my map is not uh, map is not a territory, right? But map can be a territory. How do I know it's true? Like ask yourself, like whatever you believe is true. When once you once you wrote it down, how do you know it's true? And where did where did I pick it up? Like who taught me that? Or maybe it's just like kind of I absorbed it without and it bypassed the filter of critical thinking, right? Maybe it's not my thought at all. Yeah, and all our thoughts are not our own thoughts. Like we are just remixers. Uh, learning from others and remixing it, synthesizing it. Zoom in, zoom out. That's another exercise you can do. Like ants view and chair on the moon, right? Like imagine yourself, you're, 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 you're in the heat of, like you're in some kind of problem. You have some kind of problem, right? And you, that you're trying to solve. Imagine yourself, you're an ant running around and looking at yourself, the, this big human being running and uh, having high temperature and heat and, uh, uh, you know, uh, being very... I don't know, anxious, angry, uh, furious. And like how, like from the ant's view, from the ant's perspective, how would that feel? Or another perspective, uh, imagine you're on the moon. There is a chair on the moon, you're sitting on the moon and you're looking at the planet Earth and you're using a, a super telescope or whatever. And you see like all this, or so you see the planet, you see all, all these humans uh, doing some, doing their business there. And you know that there is somewhere there a little human being that is you how is it like once you get this scale sitting on the moon in a space looking at earth uh, how does that problem feels does it matter will it matter one year from now that's an exercise that you can do uh, mind is a powerful thing <laughs> mind is the most powerful thing and there are many things that you can uh, experiment with nlp swish very interesting exercise now you have a you have a current picture in your mind and you have a picture of, of your vision, right? And imagine that you have a, like a little uh, like dimming kind of uh, d dimming calibrator, right? Like, which, like a toggle that you switch and you slowly like this black and white small image of your future becomes bright and vivid, right? How you can, um, uh, how you can make the vision and it's, it slowly becomes more bright, brighter and, and more vivid and it becomes your reality and the one that you have right now it's uh you're dimming it, dimming it down right like it becomes more uh it becomes less bright more black and white and uh, uh less significant in a sense very simple exercise 
and uh, simple practice that you can do on a regular basis. Futureme.org. Uh, write a letter to your future self. You can send an email. It will come one year from now or three years or five years, right? And then build this. We, we treat our future selves as like some kind of strangers, whereas like that future you is you uh, in the same way as all the past yous that were yesterday, last week, one year, five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, they were you, all you, all used from the past and all used from the future. And you right now, it's all one being, right? How can I build a relationship with my future self? What can I, what can I tell them? What would they tell me? And what can I tell them? Write a letter. Uh, and what's, <laughs> it's very interesting to, to kind of, as you do it year after year after year to see like how your mind is, has been changing and your life has been progressing. I'm done. <laughs> so resources, uh, just uh, look at these books. Like again, you don't need to go through them in depth. Uh, just uh, yeah, Def definitely read Coaching Habits um, and Men's Search for Meaning. The rest uh, you can do summaries, but you can you can just absorb different questions and use these questions that coaches use. Write them down on the paper. Do the journaling part. Reflect on your mind. Right. Organize your mind lots of things will start make sense all righty uh okay it's good for now thank you so much for being here and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one take care